I saw my first penny scale at the Columbus train station in 1971 and fell in love with it. I stepped onto the scale and my heart started pounding and then I heard a voice say, buy all you can. So I was into mechanisms and these are some very complicated, exquisite mechanisms inside these machines and that captivated me. Over the years of 50 years of collecting, purchased about 200. So these are the top 100 here. This is the oldest scale in the collection, 1891, and it was out on the street in front of the arcade of the Columbus Depot, the train station. This was outside 75 years when I purchased it. I would say from 1890 to 1950 would be the bulk of the collection. There are 30 scales out of these 100 that are related to Ohio, and 10 of them were in operation in Columbus. When they first came out in 1885, they were called nickel drop devices, nickel drop weighing machines. So you had to put in a five cents. At the time, that would buy you two loaves of bread. So it was a new technology. People were excited. They were very entertaining. And then in about three years later, they went for the penny. The penny releases a mechanism that instigates any kind of theatrical uh, events within the machine itself. Some uh, talk to you, some give out movie star pictures, uh, some uh, give out horoscopes, some ask you if you can guess your weight. There were all kinds of gimmicks employed to get you onto that scale. And uh, it was the primary way people got weighed until the bathroom scale became affordable. I had purchased my first scales out of the Columbus train station, and I have one over here. There were six scales in that main concourse, and the operator was in Pennsylvania, and I wrote him a letter, and he responded that he was coming to collect those scales, so I met him. And out of the six, I bought three, and this is one of them. And uh, it's a peerless junior. So I'll, I'll demonstrate it. So uh, quickly just goes right up to your weight. Here's one of the most amazing scales as far as dials. You'll see this scale as very similar to this one. But to modernize, they covered up George Washington's face. 13-point lithograph on tin. It's exquisite. Now, you can see it here. I collect images of scales in movies. Here's Laurel and Hardy with this scale. So this was in a candy store in Pennsylvania. Oddly enough, you'd think a candy store wouldn't want a scale in there, but they do quite well. And, and I've known a number of them to be in ice cream parlors, and candy stores. So this is one of my top 10 favorites, and it's called the Cayley Washington Scale. And uh, that was the Cayley Brothers out of Detroit. And you can see their initials here, CB. But they were probably the most prolific and amazing manufacturers of all things coin-op. This is the weight teller. Uh, that was a funny story. I, was, I tried to find this scale for many years, and I was in LA and I saw this much of it over the top of a car on my way to the LA airport, and I jumped out, and the store was closed, but I bought it when I landed in St. Louis. And this is also a Cayley, Cayley Brothers, and that's called The Weight Teller, about 1905. This is quite amazing. The peerless, the peerless people were just did magnificent work, but this is porcelain enamel, like on a bathtub. And you'll see throughout the collection some amazing colors in porcelain. This is about 100 years old. So over here are fine examples of mechanisms that do more than just give you your weight. They are guessers. So the idea behind these is that you would dial in what you think you weigh. And I, over there, I weighed 160. So I'm gonna put this on 160, and then I'm gonna put in a penny. Now the act of turning this supplies all the power. So 
see how they came all the way together. And then that opened a door to bring my money back instead of putting it into the cash box. And inside there is quite an amazing group of gears. I'm just really captivated by the mechanisms. Well, over here we have another way to get a free fair way. And this is one of the most exciting of the scales. It's called an arcade scale. And I love the pun, fair way, as in golf. So you would drop your coin in. The act of getting on advances the coin onto the tee. And then the idea is you try to drive over the lake. Wow, that's <laughs> that was lucky. Over here you have one of the most classic American penny scales, the Toledo scale. And that was in Eaton, Ohio in the Central House Cafe. It was made famous by Rockwell on a cover of a Saturday Evening Post. All four of these Toledo scales here have great Ohio history. The Toledo here shows the influence of municipal clocks and then came along the influence of skyscraper architecture. Mr. Peanut was at the Broad and High Peanut Shop, then he moved out the Town and Country Peanut Shop, and then when I acquired him, he was at the State and High Peanut Shop. So he uh, has done a lot of traveling, but the real story about Mr. Peanut is his patina. Kids would rub his nose for good luck, and that's why his nose is bare. Mr. Peanut is a downtown Columbus, Ohio legend. Definitely my top three scales, one of the top three. Carrying on with the beauty of patina and the story it tells, you can see the shop owner's palm prints where he would hold on to Mr. Peanut and roll him out onto the sidewalk daily to bring people into the shop. There were only 65 made, one for each planter's peanut shop. Moving on to other more exciting scales are the horoscope scales that would give you a chance to ask some questions. This scale was in Columbus, Ohio, and the Olentangy Bowling Alley, up on the main floor. Oh, you could ask, who stands in my way to happiness? How can I hold my sweetheart? Is my sweetheart true? And then you would drop in a penny, The window would open, yes, while you are together. Hmm. <laughs> so, and here's probably one of the most beautiful mechanisms in the collection. You would, again, dial a question. There, there could be three answers to the same question. Uh, where is my hope? So uh, I'm going to throw the penny in so you can see it. Open the door. And up here is the answer. Time will tell. So they would change these wheels and also the bands they would change so there would be fresh fortunes. This scale you would pick out the month you were born and out would come one of 16, I think it is, 16 different answers. So this would chop off a ticket. So you would see a ticket like this and they would bait you into wanting another one. You're fortunate because. And then you gotta put in another penny to find out why. Over here we have another Columbus scale, and this came out of the men's room at the Drexel Theater. Porcelain enamel, signage, tile, the materials they use to build these are cost prohibitive today. In the 70s, there was a problem starting to occur in vandalism, which had not been a problem. And I started picking up the pace of my acquisitions because I would come back to a scale I'd been watching and it would it'd be broken and chipped. So I started getting as many as I could into safety before any damage. This is a Model O peerless ticket scale. I carried this up out of the basement of the Lincoln Theater, but its last known location was Long Drug at 893 Long Street. So this is a Columbus, Ohio scale. 
and it would hand out a ticket of a movie star. On the back, you would get a fortune. The Peerless Company paid psychologists big money to come up with these flattering words. And then it would stamp your date and weight on the back. It was a private way. Very important. People uh, were getting tired of letting everybody see their weight on the big dials. So this is a Model A Peerless ticket scale. And it was the very first one they came out with. Notice I floated down as I stood up. That just engaged all the mechanisms so it could work. So out comes Dick Powell. And you are sure to succeed in life for you refuse to be discouraged. And uh, also a very beautiful mechanism. It would hold a thousand tickets. Collecting has been a 50 year effort and I really do believe driven by a guiding voice of some kind. Hundreds of millions of people yearly got on these scales in public. I hear stories back from people who come and see the collection. I always weighed myself on this scale in this drugstore or on my way to the subway. I'm hoping to pass the baton to someone else to safeguard this national treasure for future generations to enjoy and study. It's handmade, high quality materials by the mechanical geniuses, and uh, the history is rich for anybody studying 20th century community life. When I first opened the doors for anyone coming to see the collection, they all pretty much drop their jaws, which makes me feel really good because they see what I see. And I see an amazing American history of ingenuity and design.